uh, welcome. On behalf of Hitachi America XBR, our business unit, I want to welcome you to Next Finance. Um, in a moment, you'll hear from two speakers, um, Dr. James Canton and um, Mr. Mike Willis. They will talk about the future of technologies and how that would impact uh, the way we do business in the future and the tools that are available to us. So without um, uh, further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to um, uh, Mr. Fred Vogelstein from Y Magazine. And um, just a housekeeping uh, rule, if there's any people from the press or who want to um, get more information about um, this topic or who want to connect to any of the speakers, uh, please contact uh, Mr. Stuart McFall at the back of the room. He will be able to direct you. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson, and thank you, Hitachi, for sponsoring this panel uh, and for being the lead sponsor of all of NextFest. Uh, these <coughs> kinds of events are a huge amount of work requiring huge amounts of people and lots and lots and lots of resources, and uh, this is Wired's fourth NextFest, and I'm told probably its largest, and uh, we couldn't have pulled it off without Hitachi's help as uh, the lead sponsor. Um, one of the, it's particularly fitting that this has taken place, that NextFest is happening here in Los Angeles, being sponsored by Hitachi, because Hitachi makes the uh, water pumps, I'm told, that uh, drive the water from San Francisco and Northern California over the, te over the mountains uh, before they uh, come down into Los Angeles. Uh, as most of you know, Los Angeles is a vast wasteland, I mean desert, uh, for, uh, uh, and uh, doesn't really have a whole lot of water on its own. And so uh, I suppose it's uh, probably fair to say that uh, without Hitachi's help, there are um, lots of people who would have to leave. Uh, so we're here, to, we're here today to talk about the future of business and finance, though. And uh, when I first started writing about all this 10 or 15 years ago, the tech boom was a corporate, Ameri was, it was a corporation-led phenomenon. Uh, what a lot of us forget is that uh, companies like Microsoft didn't get to be big and powerful from selling uh, their software to consumers as much as they did from selling it to corporations. Um, it wasn't really until the late 1990s when the, inter uh, when the internet really took off that PC penetration in households really, uh, really uh, took hold. And long before that, corporations drove, uh, in America drove the, uh, and elsewhere drove the tech boom. Um, over the course of the last five years, that's changed, so that's really no longer the case. Um, and What's happened is, is that the falling price of storage and bandwidth and processing power have uh, democratized uh, the innovation game. And in fact, actually for the past five years, it's probably fair to say that corporations have uh, been at the, uh, have been following uh, what has been going on in the consumer market. In fact, uh, in some cases, uh, they get, con they get uh, tarred with being roadblocks to the, uh, uh, development of innovation. Um, this was actually crystallized for me earlier this week in a conversation with Mike Willis, who you're going to see later on today. Um, he said that Boeing spends more money on compliance than it does on uh, research and development, which is an astounding uh, fact to me. It means, obviously, that there's some vast changes that need to happen in the world of uh, corporate finance, corporate accounting, and the way information gets transferred back and forth within, within corporations and, uh, and among them. Um, so we're going to hear from Mr. Willis a little bit later. Um, he's a partner of PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, and he's going to talk about the power of uh, XBRL, which is a new data exchange format that's allowing uh, corporations uh, to exchange data more easily within, um, within and among themselves uh, in ways that really couldn't be done before. It's something that the SEC has signed on to, and it's something that uh, more and more of the banks in this country have signed on to. Um, Mike is the perfect person to talk about this because he was the founding chairman of the XBRL. 
of XBRL International, and he's now a member of the uh, International Steering Committee. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to, I want to introduce uh, noted author, speaker, consultant, James Canton. Dr. Canton is CEO and chairman of the Institute for Go Global Futures, um, which is a think tank he founded in 1990. And in that capacity, he's worked with almost every corporation, uh, every Fortune 1000 corporation on the planet to help them think about how they can use technology uh, to drive more innovation through their uh, enterprises. And he's a senior fellow at the Center for Research and Innovation in, uh, the, at the Kellogg School of Management. He's advised three White House administrations and the National Science Foundation. He is the author, among others, of the extreme future, the top trends that will reshape the world for the next 5, 10, and 20 years. So please, all of you, welcome Dr. James Canton.